So here we have an initial value problem. Uh, we're given this initial differential equation and we're given these two initial value inputs. Um, our first step, I like to uh, put this into this form. Okay, so now we're in this and then we can bring this down into the characteristic equation. So this is gonna be r squared plus six r plus nine is equal to zero. Um, and then we'll factor this, and so we'll get r uh, plus three, and r plus three. All right, and now um, let's, we'll set that equal to zero. So we know r is equal to negative three, and r is equal to negative three. As we showed in the last videos, we now know how to solve this thing. So we'll come up with the, uh, the general solution. This is going to be y is equal to c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2x times e to the negative 3t. Okay, so now we have this. This is where the initial value problem comes in. We'll substitute this down here, and then we'll we'll um, find the derivative of all of this, and substitute this part down there. So first, we'll substitute this in. So y of uh, zero is equal to one. So we'll make y one, and any time we see a t, we'll substitute in a zero. So c one e to the negative three times zero plus c two. Um, x. Actually, that's going to be t there. The variable is t we're working with. Uh, t, so wait, all right. So that's going to be equal to zero. Um, e to the negative three times zero. Um, since we got a zero multiplication in this part, that's that's all going away. So now we know what one is equal to uh, c one e to the zero and e to the zero is equal to one. So c1 is equal to one. All right, so we're, we're halfway there. There's, there's our first, uh, one of our first answers. So then we'll take this down here and we'll do y prime. So we'll take the derivative of this. Um, with that, we're going to get, uh, we'll bring this negative three down, so it'll be negative three uh, c1 e to the negative three t and then we'll add c2 e to the three t minus three c2 t e to the negative three t and the reason this looks like this is because this is a product rule um, this t is separate from this that's why there's no project rule over here so this looks a little different from this over here so um, we know now that c1 is equal to 1 so we can go ahead and plug those in and we also know that y prime of 0 is equal to 4 so we can go ahead and plug in 4 for y prime um, anytime we see a um, t now we can plug in a 0 so let's go ahead and plug all the stuff in. So negative three times one times e to the negative three times zero um, plus c2 times e to the negative three times zero. And then we'll bring this down a little bit. Um, minus three times c2 times zero times e to the negative three times zero. So uh, all this is um, times zero, so this all goes away. This right here is e to the zero, and so that goes away because that's a times one. And then that's also equal to one, and so when we simplify this, we'll bring this over here. Four is equal to negative three times one plus c2 times one. Um, so let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that. So four is equal to negative three plus C two. We'll bring this over here 
<clears throat> uh, so just subtract it, so, or add it, and that's going to be 7, uh, sorry, is equal to C2. So now I'm going to have C1 and C2. Let me go ahead and write up here. C1 is equal to 1, C2 is equal to 7. <clears throat> so once we have these, <clears throat> we're going to plug those back into this. So our general solution now no longer has our, our C constants. So our final answer will be Y is equal to 1 over here. Since it's times 1, we'll just leave that out. It will be equal to E to negative 3 times T plus <clears throat> 7 times T E to the negative 3T. And that right there is our answer. This comes from that.